Yeah. Minneapolis we go. Second half with Marquette up three, Dwayne Wade. Just two points in the first half, but he just charged in the second. 10 and 19 from the field for the game. Marquette up three, it's Wade. Wow, off the pit turnover. Travis Diener, who was held to just four points, eight assists. There's one of the assists to Wade. Style and Foss. Later in the second half, Marquette up six, Wade taking over. Is he the best player in this game? Circus shot, Marquette up nine. That was unreal. Pit down six, Brandon Knight to Siobhan Troutman, 15 points for Troutman. Pitt not giving up. That's not their style. Knight, 16 points, 11 assists, pit down one. Same score, Marquette. D Wade, they call him. Jump stop, and then the hoop off the glass. Wade at 22. Under 10 seconds to go. Pitt with a chance. Down three, Brandon Knight. Knight can't get it to go. Marquette with the board. Marquette with the win. D Wade didn't get down, he says, after that two point first half. You have a bad first half, don't mean you're going to have a bad second half. And I keep that in mind because I didn't have some great second halves and I didn't have some great first halves. So I keep that in mind all year. My teammates give me confidence and my coaches give me confidence. He totally <laughs> is bought in to continuing to be one of the most unselfish players in America. And that, and, and it just, our whole team feeds off of that. And I'm really disappointed and still basically in shock that our season's over. Uh, it doesn't diminish what uh, these kids have accomplished this year. I'm sick, you know. Uh, it's it's hard it's hard to to swallow this loss. Um, I mean we we lost to a good team. You know I don't want to take anything away from Marquette, but there are a lot of things that we we could have done better. The first game for the Midwest Region matching Wisconsin and Kentucky. Wildcats down 2014. Marquise Estelle though big day. Career high 28 points. UK down four down four. Badgers now down one. Kirk Penning three of 12 from three in the first couple of games. Five of seven on Thursday finished with 20. Just before halftime Keith Bogans the senior against Penny goes down hard. Bogans had a high ankle sprain and did not return five points. Now Kentucky 25 straight wins with this damage the champions chances. I don't know Badgers down 56 53. Michael Wilkinson in there making a one point game he had 13 but Kentucky's next possession calmly calmly with the tip Eric Daniels off the Esto miss Wildcats go up 58 55 and then Wisconsin less than a minute to go Wilkinson traveling blow the whistle Kentucky wins it 63 57 now 26 straight wins so we look ahead to Saturday only fitting that Marquette and Kentucky would meet in the Elite Eight after all the teams have met eight times in NCAA tournament play all time the most frequent pairing of opponents in tourney history. The series split with each team winning four games, but they'll break that tie Saturday. Earlier this month, Jim Harrick pleading his case to our Dick Vitale. He did so less than a week after a report by ESPN's Jeremy Schapp uncovered NCAA violations at Georgia. Thursday, Harrick resigned as head basketball coach. Under the resignation agreement, university officials will give Harrick his remaining base pay, along with broadcast payments and a Nike paycheck, which total over $250,000. Now, Georgia turns its attention to finding a new basketball coach. In light of the circumstances, I think it's the best decision for all concerned. Coach Herrick is an excellent coach, but I think his decision is in the best interest of the university, of the athletic association. Uh, based upon the facts that uh, have been discovered in the investigation to date, uh, his resignation is appropriate, uh, and we accept it. I saw Coach Herrick today, and uh, Shook his hand, told him I was sorry. Georgia was Jim Harrick's biggest challenge. He took over a team that was coming off a 500 season, and his first season there in Athens, he won just a third of the team's games. But by Harrick's final season, the Bulldogs had improved their win percentage by almost 40%. With more insight, ESPN.com's Andy Katz. Jim Harrick Sr. knew he was out as the men's basketball coach at the University of Georgia in early March, when he was suspended with pay and the team was pulled from the postseason. Thursday afternoon, he met with the team and his staff and told them that he was retiring from coaching, saying that he wanted to spend more time with his grandchildren and his children. Now, for the next men's basketball coach at Georgia, sources have told me they're going to look for someone who has no NCAA violations in their closet. And sources said the leading candidates are Western Kentucky's Dennis Felton and former Hawks coach Lon Kruger. Thank you, Andy. The next coach of Georgia will take the job knowing additional punishment to the program could be on its way from the NCAA. This year, following that school investigation into the violations, the team was banned from postseason tournaments.
You know, all time at Duke against Kansas's Roy Williams. Coach Roy looking to stop that skid. Second half, Kansas down two. Aaron Miles, great pass to Nick Collison. Collison, 14 to 22 from the field. We're tied. Kansas up two, second half. Collison. Miles feeding him again. Duke actually tried to recruit Collison. Can you blame him? Kansas up four. Collison pushes his own teammate, Jeff Graves, out of the way so he can make the basket. Career high, 33 points, 19 boards for Collison. Duke down for J.J. Redick, one of 11 from three-point range, two of 16 from the field. Coach K saying, don't worry, you're just a freshman. Gans up four, second half, Collison will get his own board. And then check out the arrow. Why do we have it there? Because Collison will score with one foot on Duke's Casey Sanderson. So Collison pushes a teammate out of the way, steps on an opponent to score, and make Kansas advance. Nick Collison leading the way for the Jayhawks as they move on. Our game plan was, uh, you know, that Nick's got to be effective. And I've had teams in the past that didn't necessarily execute the game plan, but this team really did well tonight. It's one of the great performances you can have in the tournament. And uh, he played like a champion. And uh, it took that type of effort to beat our kids tonight because our kids played like champions also. Arizona Notre Dame, the other Anaheim matchup first half. Arizona up three. Jason Gardner, sweet little dish to Rick Anderson. Related in, he had nine points, 12 boards, 31 26. Cats, meanwhile, the Irish struggled. Matt Carroll, that's an air ball. He was just four of 14. Dan Miller, only a shot better. Wild shot here, he was four of 13. Later, they moved down the court. Hassan Adams to Anderson again. Arizona up 13. Part of a 16 2 Wildcat run. Flush it for two. Late first half, still 13 point lead. Gardner pushing the ball up court, then stops and throws it in. He had 19 to lead the U of A. Arizona up 16 at that point. Then Luke Walton, and for playing horse, yeah, that's a letter on you. 16.7 rebounds, 8 assists. Dad says that shot looked impossible. 88-71, U of A wins it. So they'll take on Kansas, sixth meeting between the two schools all time. The series is four games to two in favor of the Jayhawks. Count of the game being close, three of the last four meetings between KU and U of A have been decided by exactly three points. Favored by a field goal to drop kick Michigan State. You got a couple coaches who have each won a national championship the past three years. Maryland shot 37% on the game. Ugh, Steve Blake misses the open layup. He didn't wear his jumping shoes. Later in the second, the Spartans are up 47 to 39. Maurice Egger. Four eight man, six of 17 from the three was Tom Izzo's club. It was 54 40 with about seven minutes to play. But beware of the turtles. Blake intentionally fouled. He sinks the free throws, and Maryland scores on the next possession. A four point swing. Gary Williams still sweats. Under four minutes to play. Blake gets that one to go, and Maryland has a lead. A 15 0 run. Just over a minute to play. Paul Davis throwing down the slam. Tied at 58, and then Davis. He's a freshman. You'd never know from that kind of move. Spartans up two. Maryland's going to have one last chance. Can't go to Juan Dixon. Who are you going to go to? How about Stevie Blake for three in the win? No. Defending champs are done. 60 to 58. Earlier game in San Antonio, June Calhoun's Huskies, the five seed, facing Texas, the one. Second half, the one for the Longhorns. Usually TJ Ford gets it to Brandon Mouton. Longhorns up by 14, but UConn gets back within two. Talik Brown comes up with loose ball to steal. Brown on the run for two. Make it three. Free throw, though, no good. 71 apiece, nine points for Brown. And Brown to Ben Gordon, who is pulling up for four. Huskies up three. Gordon had 16, but UConn hitches four of 13 threes. 74 all Mouton. Right down Main Street. A career high 27 on 10 of 18 shooting. Texas up two. Next Huskies possession. Emeka Okafor. 21 points, 17 rebounds, 76 all. 40 seconds left. Huskies down two to Lee Brown. Feeds Marcus White. Ugh. Texas gets the ball on the alternating possession. UConn down four final ticks. Gordon, the three. TJ Ford, the steal underneath. Ford finished with 13 to nine. Longhorns, first trip to a regional final since 1990. They will get Michigan State. So what about the matchup? Michigan State and Texas Spartans have been winning with defense. They haven't allowed any of their tournament opponents to break 65 points or shoot better than 40 percent. But the Longhorns have been shooting lights out, averaging 80 a game. Something has got to give. Cinderella run, the 12th seeded Bulldogs facing one seed Oklahoma in the East Regional in Albany. First half, Joel Cornett. 
Butler up by one, 17-16. Later in the first half, Qantas White misses, and Ebby Ara doesn't. Ara playing with a broken bone in his left wrist. OU up to second half. Cornet reversing himself. Two of his 21. Bulldogs hanging around. They're within five. Ara. Big shot here. This good for two. Fake it for Ara. Had 25 points after scoring only 12 in the first two rounds. Kevin Bookout goes blast for two. And Oklahoma wins. Sooners one win away from their second straight Final Four. They dispatch Butler. Auburn done defending itself. Now it's Syracuse's turn. Keem Warwick misses. Carmelo Anthony 0 for 4 in the first half. Drops 18 after the break. Q's up 8. Tigers were 10 of 22 from behind the three. Nathan Watson 4 of 7 from distance. We've got a four-point game. Under a minute to go. Anthony with eight rebounds on his resume. Q's up a six-pack. Under 20 seconds. Auburn going to pop its top again from three again. Watson again. Two-point game. Watson at 16. But the orange and are right back and if the question is what Big East team is still hooping the answer is Syracuse 79 78 Q's and Sooners Sunday for a trip to the final four two very different teams will meet in the East region final the Orange men a team led by a trio of freshmen the Sooners led by three seniors combined the Syracuse rookies averaging about 37 points per game during the tournament Oklahoma's three seniors about 27 points per but when it comes to top trios no team tops ours Reese Digger and Dickie V fellas Bad ankle and was not at all full strength. Misses the three early, finished with 15 points in 24 minutes. The man of the moment, Dwayne Wade. Four of his 11 rebounds were on the offensive end. The putback there, Wade finished with a triple-double. Marquette used a big shot of Novocaine to deaden the Cats. Freshman Steve Novak with five threes. Marquette way up, sound Crossover up. dribble in the lane to the basket. Jump pass to Wade. Slips out to Novak. Open jumper, yes! Off the deflection! Money, money, money! Tom Crean's club led by 19 at the half. Second half, Wade having his way. No way, Wade. Kentucky, winners of 26 straight, cannot stop Wade, and Marquette is on its way to stopping that win streak. Wade with 11 straight points. Only Andre Miller and Magic Johnson have ever triple-doubled in an NCAA tournament game. Robert Jackson transferred from Mississippi State, finished with 24 points and 15 boards, finishes what Wade started there. Kentucky turned it over 11 times. Wade continues to turn it on. 29 points, 11 boards, 11 assists. 83-69 win for Marquette. Kentucky uses all nine of its lives in one day. Wade with the game and the post-game inspirational. I told the guys at the halftime, leave your hearts on the court tonight because that's what it's going to take to win these ball, this ball game versus a great team. And once, once I get going, you know, my teammates do a great job of finding me. And, you know, once any player get going, you know, they're tough to guard. So Wayne just continues to do so many different things on both ends of the floor. And all of a sudden, at the end of the night, his numbers are amazing. You know, and certainly no more so than today, you know, in what's all of our biggest game. Kentucky's win streak over. Golden Eagles did it with defense, holding the Cats below 40% from the field. No team had done that since Louisville in late December. That was Kentucky's last loss. West Regional Final in Anaheim, Arizona the one, Kansas the two. Kirk Heinrich coming off his two-point, one-of-nine shooting effort against Duke. First half, Nick Collison feeds Heinrich Jayhawks by 16. But remember, they blew that 20-point lead in losing to Arizona back in January. And sure enough, the Cats come back. Luke Walton spins around Collison. Arizona, a 13-0 run to finish the half. They were down only three at halftime. Second half, Hassan Adams knocks in the three. We're tied at 56. Kansas down two. Heinrich the three. Heinrich said, I don't remember ever being so anxious and giddy before a game. Tied at 66. Heinrich blocked by Adams. Adams will finish. He had 11. It's a two-point Wildcats lead. And we go back to Heinrich for another three. These are NBA threes. 28 for Heinrich. 10 of 23 shooting. He hit six threes. KU up one. Jayhawks blew a 16-point lead in the first half and a 14-point lead in the second. Luke Walton knocks down a three. He had 18 and 10. Under a minute to go. Jayhawks still up one. Keith Langford clutch. Two of his 13, three-point Kansas lead. Here's your game, 7.1 to go. Arizona down three. Gardner for the tie. Blocked by Heinrich. Gardner gets it back. Another three. A pair of one seeds go down on Saturday. Jayhawks survive 78-75. They'll get Marquette next weekend in New Orleans. Roy Williams looking him up and down. He's into his fourth Final Four. You have to be very, very good, and you have to also be lucky. And today, 
uh, for two and a half hours. I told our kids, that, you know, Arizona had been the best team in the country, Arizona and Kentucky, the whole season. But we didn't have to be the best team in the country the whole season. We just had to be the best team for the next two and a half hours. I know it's going to be my last time in the locker room with those guys and wearing my Arizona uniform and with the coaches. Uh, you know, that's the hardest part of everything is knowing that it's all over now. And uh, we're not going to have another shot at it. Well, maybe we should have seen this coming from the Jayhawks. It's Kansas's first win over a one seed since 93, when, like Saturday, they defeated a team in the regional finals as a two seed to earn a trip to the Final Four in New Orleans. Uh, Syracuse led by Carmelo, the mellow man. Now Anthony. First half, Syracuse down 17-16. Will he go around in circles? Anthony, the fadeaway, he was six of nine from the floor in the first half. The 2-3 zone. The truth. Kevin Book out the crazy shot. Oklahoma just shot 31% from the floor. 11 first half turnovers. Kelvin Sampson watching the highlight. Carmelo Anthony controlling it. Off the missed shot. Anthony there for the lay-in. 12 first half points for Carmelo. Syracuse up 30-20. Second half. McNamara misses. You know who's there. Carmelo! <laughs> Hughes scored the first eight points of the half. Ten rebounds for Anthony. They out-rebounded the Sooners 40-20. 28 trade boot day as he adds the three. Syracuse rolling. Oklahoma, he tried to rattle the young buck. He gets knocked down. Don't you know who that is? A mellow man. Bang! Rock the house. Pow! Come on, help me turn it out. Syracuse up. But Jabari Brown with the noise, the one-handed jam. He had nine points and seven rebounds. Oklahoma cuts it to 12. They get no closer. Billy Edel and Takeem Warwick. He had 13 points and nine rebounds. Orangeman up 52-39. Next possession, Anthony underneath, and the regional MVP delivers. He had 20 points. Bayheim headed back to the Crescent City as Syracuse reaches the Final Four. For the New Orleans natives, Hollis Price and Qantas White, it's a tough loss. He came so far and so close. Uh, 40 minutes away from getting back to your hometown, but, you know, uh, yeah, it hurts. This is my first, my first time making it to the Final Four, and hopefully not my last time. But, um, yeah, we... I'll second that one. <laughs> this is what we work for, all the early morning workouts and everything. This is what you do so you get an opportunity to go to the Final Four and win a championship. So it, this is the best feeling I've had since I've been in Syracuse, and we just want to keep it rolling. Ooh. Hey, they may be young, but they're ready. The Syracuse freshman Anthony, Anthony Edelin, and McNamara combined to outscore the Sooner seniors 38 to 17. They also shot 50% from the field compared to 18% for the Oklahoma elder statesman. The reason for the awful Sooners numbers? Let's ask Jay Bills. Syracuse beat Oklahoma and advanced to the Final Four because of their defense, their 2-3 zone. The Orange made Oklahoma look like they'd never seen a 2-3 zone before, holding them to 31% shooting from the field, enforcing 19 turnovers. Hollis Price and Qantas White combined for 4 of 25 from the field. And those 19 turnovers absolutely killed Oklahoma because they only averaged 10. And the Orange also established Carmelo inside early and got him off to 20 points and 10 rebounds to be the most outstanding player of the region. South Regional Final, Michigan State and Texas, Texas piping hot. Sophomore Sid Mill Harris, jersey number 1343, three, have some, Netherlands style. Brandon Mouton, jersey number 343, three, have some more, Mouton 16. Brian Boddicker, jersey 33, 4 3, a 10 zip Texas run. Tom Izzo said we needed to do a better job guarding anybody with a number three in their jersey. Still first half, Texas running. Maurice Ager on defense, check him out. Ager not sure who to guard. Boddicker left wide open, very sure what to do with it. Y'all got to give me that. Texas, six of nine from three land in the first half. Second half, kept TJ Ford is just plain lethal. How nice is he? <laughs> Real nice. Ten assists, 19 points. TJ, is it worth it? Let me work it. Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Fourth double-double this year. All of them in big games against Oklahoma, against Kansas, Notre Dame, and Michigan State. But State not done. Chris Hill, three. Sometimes you just gotta love the rim. Hill had 10 points, Spartans down five. They out-rebounded the Longhorns, 38 to 28, but rebounds don't do a whole lot when TJ Ford is dishing like that. Boddicker, 15 points, Longhorns shot just under 50%.
Royal Ivy misses the three, but check out Boddicker, grabs the board, and watch Allen Anderson, away from the ball, fouls Mouton like Hackershack style. What's up? Called for the intentional. Tom Izzo needs a hug. Five Longhorns and double figures. Rick Barnes says the win is because of T-E-A-M. The thing that I take most pride in is the way we, we have played all year as a team. We've had different guys all year long do different things for us, and uh, that's been the story of this basketball team. I'd like to feel better about how we played. Uh, I, I say there's four areas that you have to play well to win in, at this time of year, and you have to play good defense, you have to rebound well, you have to shoot good free throws, and you have to have good guard play. And, and unfortunately, we were, you know, one out of four today. We know how hard it is to get here and to be considered a one seed and actually making it as watching everyone drop off as one seeds um, this past couple of days. So, you know, it, it was just a great moment to know that we were able to go to New Orleans. Last time Texas was in the Final Four, 1947. Only Wisconsin had a longer span between Final Four appearances in NCAA tournament history. But soon there's going to be another man in the room. Ben Howland, who was hired by UCLA as their new basketball coach late Wednesday night and will be introduced as such on campus formally on Thursday, 11 a.m. Westwood time. Despite a late pitch from Pittsburgh and some of its well-heeled boosters, Howland bolted to take over a team coming off its first losing season in 55 years. Andy Katz believes this will be a good fit. Ben Howland is the perfect fit at UCLA. He grew up in Southern California, and he coached as an assistant at Santa Barbara. He also rebuilt two programs, one at Northern Arizona and one at Pittsburgh. As for the Panthers, they'll certainly look at Pittsburgh natives, Memphis coach John Calipari, and NC State coach Herb Sendak. Manhattan's Bobby Gonzalez will also be a viable candidate. Assistants from all over the Northeast will try to get it, as will Pittsburgh associate head coach Jamie Dixon. Andy, thanks. Hallen would be the most experienced head coach to take over at Westwood since the Wizard left. Hallen's nine years of college head coaching experience is nine more years of such experience than four of his predecessors had.